Good morning, Chairman and all panelists and all participants. Uh, today I would like to present a case discussion from uh, Lama Tipati Hospital. Um, history, uh, 51 years old woman, uh, she had an accident, a motor, work, motor vehicle accident and she had a left uh, thigh pain and groin pain and unable to move her hip. Uh, the past history, uh, she had a left femoral, fra shaft, femoral shaft fracture and have been treated with uh, plating for the last three years. After that, she returned to her normal activity without limitation. Uh, the physical examination was normal, uh, left side was a little bit uh, swollen, unable to move her hip, and the distal neurovascular was intact. This is the and lidiograph, uh, we can see that uh, uh, stable tight in the tochanteric fracture with a uh, union femoral shaft fracture with uh, a braid. Uh, so uh, in this case, uh, uh, at the first time she was uh, fixation, make a definite fixation at the intertochanter from the local hospital. And after surgery, uh, she cannot tolerate weight bearing and un unable to walk normally and then she she came to my hospital and this is the the film after six months after the surgery from the local hospital uh, we can see that uh, there are uh, a little, no callus formation at the fracture site and she was fixed with a uh, short Grandma nail uh, with a uh, wireless position of the of the neck shaft angle, and poss possibly uh, the the tip of the screw may be penetrated into the hip joint. This is the film of the whole femur. Uh, they are removed some the proximal screw to to insert the distal screw of the gamma nail like this, and. At that time, uh, we decided to uh, make a further investigation with a CT scan to, to evaluate the bone quality and the, at the fracture side and also the hip joint. And this is the CT scan. Uh, we can see that there is no callus here and, and the tip of screw is printed into the hip joint. And this is the sagittal view. Here is penetrated some into the hip joint a little bit. Uh, okay, let's go next. And uh, the serology there is no sign of infection from ESR and CRP. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, in this case, we talked to our team and also the patient about the choice of treatment, uh, the possible future complication from, uh, we discussed about arthroplasty and fixation, and we, we, we talked with the patient about the f possible future complication of the arthroplasty because it's not easy here because if we do the, the arthroplasty, there must be a problem about the proximal fixation of the femoral stem, so may, maybe we need the revision stem for primary arthroplasty. So our team and patient decide to do the fixation. Uh, we, we, we did a uh, lateral crossfit walkout osteotomy uh, using ankle bed pad fixation plus uh, alley egg bone graft augmented with a po uh, supine position with a radiolucent table and prep preparation of the pep uh, skin preparation both legs. And this is the inter uh, operative x ray. Uh, we we decide uh, here uh, the guide wire. The guy why with uh, with the condyla plate guide uh, put in into the uh, inferior part of the of the femoral head because the bone is there and we want to make a valgus osteotomy uh -huh, and insert more guide and check the lateral and uh, we hit the, the the blade in like this and apply the ankle bed plate and apply the uh, check the lateral and put the screw in and we can see that there's a 
gap here because we want to make some bulkus uh, neck sharp. And we put the bone calf here and apply the screw. This is the post-operative film. Uh, for, unfortunately, we, uh, I, I break uh, some, some uh, greater toe chanter here, so, so I have to wiring it to the, to the plate and make a, a soft tissue suture with, yes. And after two weeks after surgery, uh, the, the fracture is still fine and uh, the plate position is good and there are some migration at the TT but we still wait and see. And this is a six month everything heal. And uh, there are some uh, degenerative chain of the hip joint, but patient still fine. There's, she not, doesn't complain about groin pain, anything. And she uh, able to walk normally. Uh, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, may I invite Ajahn Kongke to, to have uh, comments about the initial fixation? Uh, I just start first. With the diagnosis, the x-ray, the first x-ray, please. Okay. What, what do you, what's the, the, the panelists think, what is this uh, type of fractures? Simple, not so simple, or difficult one? please. So for, for a diagnosis? If the fractures uh, start from the greater uh, trochanter to the lesser, so it should be like a kind of intertrochanteric. We can call it uh, like per trochanteric fracture. So, uh, but it's a kind of not true AP of the hip in the AP view. So to me, normally, I just want to make it more AP view by just maybe traction and then internal rotation or if there is pain, if the, the patient had, ha, uh, has pain, then I probably tilt the x-ray a bit to get through AP. If you, you, you tilt the x-ray to get like an, an uh, obturator oblique view, it probably get more AP view because most of the patient just external rotate the leg or the hip when there is a fracture here. So it would be better in terms of getting a true AP and then you can see clear, more clear in terms of fracture pattern or configuration. What is your uh, idea for this uh, type of... No, so for me, I think that uh, the key point is the, is the thin of the, this line sure that uh, this is a um, fracture here, but uh, the point is, I'm not sure about that this uh, bone is, is strong, uh, good enough until we can put the dynamic hip screw or not. So I think that the, the surgeon tried, he's not sure, so he planned to do the, the nail, one point. Uh, another thing that we learned a lot from the many, many cases that uh, sometimes that uh, we have uh, something like this, Sometimes CT can show us that, uh, how about the, the, the depth of the, the bone? How, how much that do you have the bone stocks for, for this part? And uh, if you're not sh sure about the x-ray, sometimes it's difficult to, to, to make a clear two lateral x-ray on this view. Sometimes we do the CT scan for this. Okay. Ajahn Matura. The same? We still be in uh, classification or no, 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 just, just proceed just to the treatment? The, it's easy or not easy one, oh. this one. Okay, when you see this placement a lot, <laughs> it's different from inter fracture in low energy trauma because the displacement is a lot. When you see a lot of displacement, don't determine this, just traction table will reduce everything because the soft tissue is already spread. This is one thing. So I can go for the treatment uh, also. Yes. When you see this, when the, I, yes, preference for the sephromedial rail is okay because the lateral wall, you, if you are not sure, CT scan may help. But in this case, it is not about the implants. It's about the technique of doing the implants. If you think this is an entry point, you have to be very careful. Sometimes we need even open reduction. Make sure anatomical is reduced, is there, and then you can see the entry point and you can put the nail correctly. This is one thing. Further? Yeah, yeah. I, I just make the story short. For the young, 
orthopedic surgeons. If you see this x-ray, most of the young surgeons said, oh, this is simple fractures. But for me, this is very difficult fractures. Different. This is the young patients. Displacement is a lot. And high energy trauma. Close reduction, almost very difficult or maybe not possible. I see this one. I said, I may need open reduction. I will not try. I try close. Sometimes it's maybe 10% maybe of the case. But most of the case, I have to do open reduction of these fractures. It's not the easy one. Can we see the post-op? And that may explain what Ajahn Tirachai want to emphasize. In fact, it's not the wrong type of implant, if you may say, but the application. When you see a case of failure, always analyze why it become like this, right? If you don't reduce it well, you cannot identify the right entry point. Again, we can discuss whether use fracture table or not, that's another issue. But reduction always related to the right entry point. If you don't reduce it well, you cannot have the right entry point and it's end up with this, you see? If you see the position of the screw is not in the right place, that means something wrong here. Reduction is wrong. Whereas, I just want to emphasize another point. It, you see here, this is what you have to do quickly before it violates the whole femoral head and protrude into the acetabulum, then you have no choice. You have to go to total joint, right? So don't, don't wait and see because it's going to move and, and destroy all, everything. And this is a good example. You see the result, right? You, may, you almost lost opportunity. You wait three weeks, six weeks, and if I have a patient, I will sue you, right? Instead of rewrite with the implant, I have to do total hip because you, you don't treat me, really. Okay. Please, Ajahn. As Dr. Tilachai said, that is really difficult because in, in the book, it, it may have this one. Why? Because of the, the interposing of the interposing of iliosoas muscle that you cannot reduce by cross reduction. And now I'm studying about the, the pertocantric fracture. That's something like a very simple. Now I do every case with CT scan and I found that it, it have the fracture always. Every case have the fracture of the greater tocanter. And if you do nailing, it will burst out. I am collect case and I, I will talk in the future about that. Well, that I do not agree with the nailing in the pertocantalic fracture. I will show you later, okay? Now studying about the, the CT scan every case. Concrete, you have some comment, please. So I, <clears throat> I just want to to uh, give an opinion on on uh, doing a uh, an entry point here. So, so it's probably difficult to 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 put the the nail through the the, the tip of the trochanter here because of the fracture itself, displacement, and also uh, the uh, rocking from the uh, pelvis here. So that's the, the way that Ajahn Banjong mentioned uh, from the last session, that with the uh, fraction position of the hip probably help in some case. And then, uh, especially for a big or blood pelvis like this. Another thing is, if you want to put the, the, the nail in, using the curve or limb and, st uh, and start the entry point, just medial to the, trip, the tip of the greater tocanter would be help but it's probably uh, another list, which is you, you probably break the, the tip of the trochanter. But if you put the nail through the fracture side, this kind of nail is, is big in terms of the diameter at the proximal. And then it will put the, the, the neck and the head into valus position. That's why the screw has to go all the way up to the superior part, because it already fixed in terms of angulation. And to me, if the previous implant is blocking, then I just remove it and then just go with the shot or probably the long one if you're afraid of the straight laser at the, the, the screw hole. 
and for uh, non-union like this or uh, a high risk of imp impact failure, uh, normally I will use the, the angle blade plate, just like the uh, presenter uh, used, in order to achieve or to get better uh, alignment in terms of wow gas alignment. It's, uh, uh, it's better than using another nail, which is more difficult to, to get correction by using the nail. Thank you very much. I think the time is over Thank for you. this case. Thank, Thank you very you. much.